Hey guys, Scott here and welcome to the rework series and today we're talking about the classic lad himself, the trapper. I was going to make a five second meme video where it just said give him more base traps and then just end the video, but I thought I'd actually give uh, more effort than that and actually think about a lot of buffs that we can give him that wouldn't be ridiculous because, you know, trapper is pretty shit. Everyone knows he's pretty shit. So let's try to make him a bit stronger while not being overbearing. So first... But just by default, uh, no more picking up your traps at the start of the map. You just simply start up with six traps. There's no reason for you to not start out with all your traps. It'd be like if Huntress nowadays just spawned in with one hatchet, then you had to go reload immediately. It would be stupid. It's an outdated mechanic. Uh, it also reveals that you're going against the trapper because there's just traps fucking everywhere. So you're more hesitant and more wary. And I think there's no good thing about the traps being all on the ground. The only exception is if you have that iridescent add-on that makes it so uh, iridescent stone. So the uh, traps will actually set themselves. Sometimes you get a randomly spawned trap in an okay spot. But that is such a whatever exception that it's not worth it. So you immediately spawn with all your traps, six total. The bags will still add two and one. So you can have up to nine if you used all of his best add-ons. So that uh, takes care of, you know, having to waste time looking around and stuff like that. But I want to go over kind of a new synergy with his actual traps. By the way, you would still pick up the traps afterwards. It's just the beginning of the match would be different. So uh, I, I want him to be like, like symbiotically linked with his traps. And uh, so we can do a number of things. I think a new mechanic called Adrenaline Rush for uh, Trapper would be very cool. So now when Trapper has somebody in a trap, and for probably five seconds after they get out of the trap by any means, uh, there can be various effects. And this is very modular. You can do a lot with this. My idea would be he gets an incredible speed boost. Um, maybe only when you're moving towards the survivor, but it could be generic, honestly, and I think that'd be just fine. Um, it could be, I, I was thinking something like 30%, like, so you're moving Wraith and Viz speed, um, because that seems like a lot, but A, it's, uh, not completely in your control because you would have to corral a different survivor into a trap, and B, it's a limited time thing, too. So, the idea is, you know, how many times do you get a trap on someone that's, you know, 500 feet away and you can't get to them in time? The idea is the trapper would hear someone get in a trap, he would have an adrenaline rush and just book it towards that person to be able to, you know, down them. Or, if the trapper really wanted to do some snowball -y shit, he could have somebody down in that trap and use his adrenaline rush to quickly down or at least injure another nearby survivor during that short period that they're in the trap and the five seconds afterward. Um, I don't think it would be incredibly impactful. I think it would just be a very cool thematic change that would be an, a definite benefit. And um, it would be a very obvious effect, so survivors would know they'd have to drop pallets early or whatever, like, or, you know, that they're about to get fucked. Like, he would have, you know, like, red glowing eyes, entity black smoke everywhere. He he would be very clear that he's in an adrenaline rush. Um, and then there could be add-ons to extend that adrenaline rush, change the effects of it, make it so the effects are lessened, but now you have exposed during that time. Like, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with that as well. But I think creating, like, a symbiotic link with his traps would be very, very cool. Uh, another thing that would happen is anytime someone is disarming one of his traps, there would be killer instinct on it. So you would have locational awareness of where your trap is about to be disabled. Because right now, if it gets disabled, you just hear, and, you know, John Travolta meme, like, <laughs> where was that? Uh, now you would actually see it. Once the trap is fully disarmed, you would see the aura of the trap, not the survivor, but just the trap for about five seconds. So you can get some good awareness. I think that would uh, address a lot, too, and give him some more information. And I really want to, like, hone in on this symbiotic link he has with his traps. Uh, additionally, he would be able to trap generators using the same animation, basically, instead of, you know, putting the trap down, like, just on the ground, he would put it kind of, like, around the side of the generator, and, uh, what that would do is basically survivors would have to spend, you know, 10 seconds taking the trap off, um, and during this time, there would be probably four or five, more like, I'd say, like, three or four, uh, decently harder skill checks, and I wanted skill checks because I wanted there to be, uh, inherent synergy with his unnerving presence perk, which makes skill checks smaller, I, that's his perk and it. There's no synergy with him whatsoever. So I think that'd be really neat. And if a survivor fails one of those skill checks, they become injured, they lose a, a health state, but not they cannot be downed by it. So if they're full health, they go to injured. If they're injured, they go to mending. If they go to mending, well, then, you know, they're they're just still mending. It can't go more than that. I think that might be too overwhelming for uh, newer players. So I don't want it to be kind of ridiculous for them. Uh, this would basically strengthen his... His strength, which is once he starts having smaller areas that he's created uh, and sets up his web of traps, he would get a lot more from it um, by making the area even more dangerous. He can have more game delay. It, basically, it's so when he goes by an area and when there's nothing good to trap, he can still have a meaningful thing to do with one of his traps and cost the survivors 
some time. And additionally, there would be self-synergy with his own new symbiotic ability with the traps, where if the survivors do successfully remove it, the aura would glow for five seconds. So now Trapper has some form of map control because he knows which gens are being worked on because he can see which traps are being removed. Now, he would have to use one of his actual main traps to do that, and that's why there's still a limited amount, uh, but it would still be a great choice to have for, you know, to some type of, uh, you know, map control. I tried thinking about ways to get him to get across the map faster, and yeah, the adrenaline rush thing could work if that's what you're going for. But at the end of the day, I don't want to just slap a teleport on every killer and call it a day because basically most killers problems is they have no map control. So we need to try to address it in a more creative way. And I think the trapping the traps thing combined with the adrenaline rush and combined with not having to waste time at the beginning, finding all your traps would be uh, a good start for trapper. And there's definitely more stuff you can do. But like I said, I'm trying to keep these, you know, meaningful, but not ridiculous. I think if we wanted to make them all competitive level, we'd have to do way more shit, but I think those are changes that'll never actually happen, so I'm trying to make them as realistic as possible. So, yeah, at the end of the day, um, overall review, starts with all his traps, bags still act the same, um, putting down the traps, they still function all the same way. Uh, when everyone is in a trap, and for five seconds after they're out of the trap, you get a massive speed boost, or an exposed, or they get slowed, or just, just something. Some adrenaline rush effect happens, so like when Trapper... Here's a trap or see someone gets in a trap. He's like, he gets like a bloodlust and just, you know, wants to beeline towards it. Or he can use that power uh, elsewhere for the amount of time if he's very, very smart about it. And um, he gets a new symbiotic link with his traps where he can see uh, when they're being disarmed with Killer Instinct, the uh, heartbeat. He can see the auras when they're disabled. And finally, he can trap generators, which also reveal the aura when the survivors take the traps off the generator. The generators can't be worked on until they're removed and they only take, you know, 10 seconds to remove and probably two or three seconds to put on. So uh, those are, I think, the main changes that I can think of while keeping him still relatively simple, not adding that much, really, and keeping his theme basically exactly the same. Um, there, there's a lot of a lot more things you can do, but then you start having to change the core identity of the killer itself, and then it's kind of like, well, you know, I don't, I don't know if I want to do that because I, I'm trying to keep them at the same as much as possible while still addressing all the things that make them weak. So uh, that is about it, guys. I'm curious what you uh, have to say about that. I'm sure there's uh, lots of other suggestions, but that is it, guys. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.